Hello and welcome back to Urban Air Gunner. Ugh, damn it, I used the word gun. Well, I guess YouTube's gonna restrict this video. <laughs> YouTube, it's okay, this is just a squirt gun, trust me. Hi and welcome back to Urban Air Gunner, and yes, YouTube, you can go ahead and restrict this video now, just like all my other videos. And that's why I went ahead and demonetized my channel, so you guys can't make any money off of it. This is my Bulldog and its current configuration. So far on it, I have just the standard sling, the grip sleeve, which you guys saw me install, the large pit bull suppressor, single shot tray in the back, and a Sightmark Core TX 4-16 by 44 marksman scope and that's well and good this thing does an awesome job oh and a caa bipod right here and that's all good this thing does an awesome job but i found a few things that will make it do an even better job a burst pepr single mount and what i'm actually hoping this is going to do is just elevate the scope less than a quarter of an inch solely for the fact that my camera mount unit doesn't have enough clearance over the back rail so i actually had to file down part of the screw that holds the camera onto the unit i think if it were just up just a bit more it would make life so much easier setting it up the other thing i got was a side wheel for the scope the utg side wheel fits perfectly on these scopes even though the numbers don't line up so in the field i'm not 30 yards i gotta be at 30 I'm, it's in focus, it looks really good right there, bang. The other thing I got is a new bipod. This is an awesome bipod. This is a top mounted bipod. What that will do is, you know what? It's so awesome. If you want to find out why this is going to be like the number one upgrade for every big bore air gun, you're going to have to watch the video. It will improve accuracy incredibly and I'll discuss that when I put it on. I got a Daniel Defense one o'clock rail offset piece and a Burris, which I just stuck my finger on the lens and smudged it up for the first time. Fast fire three red dot. And this is just gonna make acquiring a target easier than looking through a 16 power scope and being like, oh, it's up, 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 left, left, down, where'd it go? Look back at the target. This way, I'll just have it mounted on the gun quickly be able to see where the target is and then just transition over to the scope. And it comes with this little plastic protective thing and I'll probably put that on just to keep it safe when I'm in the field. And a mounting plate it comes with. And some mounting screws and stuff. And an Allen key for one of these things. I don't know. And some instructions but I can't read so those are out. I don't need instructions anyways. I know I always say that, but this time I really mean it. Three minutes into the video, you'll be seeing me read the instructions, but I'll edit that out. I don't need that. Let's get the scope off and in. You don't need to see that. You don't need to learn my bad habits of how to mount a scope, so we're just gonna come back when that's all done. The interesting thing about this Burris single mount thing, scope mount, I know what it is. You know I know what it is. Each scope ring top is held in with six screws. You're, you're thinking, oh, that sounds, it seems really secure. Not until you gotta take them all out. But that's not why I turned the camera back on. Why well, I turned the camera back on was because I have a Hogue handle all, the grip sleeve that you saw me install in the video. Oh, better keep these someplace. Then. There we go. I have an unused one of those. If one person out there has a bulldog and doesn't have a Hogue handle all and would like that one, send me a message and I will mail it to you for free. Absolutely free. But before you send me a message, go check the very first top comment. I assume it's gonna go very quickly and I don't wanna get a thousand messages saying, you know, I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. Go check that top comment and I'll post if it's available or if it's been taken. Most likely if you're seeing this video and it's the video has been up for more than a few days, it's been taken. The Burris mount comes with these tactical tops, I guess you would call it. They have little sections of Picatinny rail on top. They also come with these smooth tops. On my other gun, I went with the smooth tops, but on this one, since I have this Burris fast fire red dot, 
I, I decided to leave them on just so it would give me some more options of where I could mount it. I don't know where the, where I'm gonna want it, where the best place to have it would be on the gun. I'm gonna have a side wheel on here, so maybe I want it forward or behind or even on the gun rail itself. So I don't know. I'm gonna figure that out today. I've got the scope mounted and I put the side wheel on. Now from the three possible positions, I could actually put the red dot, have it sitting right here on the side of the scope. In that position, instead of having my face here, I would have to move my, my head down here, if you can imagine. Instead of being like this, I would be like this. And then I'd have to come back up, which could bring me off target. The other two options are right here or right here on the scope mount. Behind would get in the way of me turning the wheel. So in front is where I'm gonna go with it. To mount the Burris Fast Fire, it comes with a Picatinny rail base. Why this is, is so you can mount it on different types of firearms more easily. I'm gonna mount it so the tightening screw is off to my right when I'm looking through it. So there's just four holes and four little pins. You line them all up and then on top, you have two places where you mount these two little bolts. So once they're in, you just tighten them down. So the cool thing is, you see it's on right there. <laughs> It's awesome. When you're looking through it, you don't have to close one eye. You can keep both eyes open and still have a perfect picture. Let me tighten this down and I may move the red dot forward one notch just to make sure that the scope wheel is free to turn. I kind of like that better there gives me more knuckle room. Without even taking my head off where it should be, I just move my head a bit to the side and then back on the scope. And that's all the movement there. And if it were in this lower position right here, in order to see it, I would actually have to bring my face down and then back up on target. So that would be that movement there. Here the movement is that. That's cool. I, I like that. And that's what it looks like with the optional hood on. And the hood just slips right on over the unit. It's just to give it a little extra protection against some rain and slight bumps and hits while you're walking around with it. And the last thing that I'm super excited for is this bipod right here. It's a top mounted bipod. So it's gonna go on top of the gun instead of underneath. To unlock it, there. it's got a little push button right here. When this is mounted on the gun, the gun's gonna be underneath it. This bipod swivels just a little bit, more than enough so the gun will self-level itself. The weight of the gun should eliminate cant. It can pan right and left while swiveling. You have all these little different points of adjustment. You can adjust, if you have an uneven surface, the legs to be different. Although it's not designed to do this, just playing around with it, I, f I figured this out. It pretty much either locks backwards or it'll lock in this position. But if you go forwards with it, it isn't a locked in feature, but it's more than stable enough to rest the gun with the legs in a 45 degree position for added stability. And then when you're done, if you need to go up, you just, push him up like that. It's got this quick on off throw lever. How cool is that? Now, the awesome thing about this is it should also eliminate the barrel of the gun rising when fired. Let me get the gun up here and I'll show you what I mean by that. All right guys, I'll try to explain this and the best way I know how. With a standard bipod, you have to preload it, kind of push it forwards a little bit, so then when it recoils, it comes back into you. And any deviation can throw off your accuracy. The gun is on top of the bipod. When the recoil force happens, it goes down, travels down the legs, comes back up, and since the gun is on top of the bipod, lifts the gun up, if that makes sense. I don't know, I could be making most of this up right now, but in my head, this seems like it's the logical explanation. With this new top-mounted bipod, because the weight of the gun is underneath the point of attachment, when the gun is fired, the recoil impulse comes straight back instead of a hop or you know, a little lift, which you would normally get with a bottom-mounted bipod with the weight of the gun on top. I'm not 100% sure why it happens. I know physics has something to do with it, and believe me, physics was not my major. The best I can explain it is like 80% science, 30% magic, 12% awesomeness, 
for a hundred percent better recoil control. I'm actually going to leave the, the original bipod on so I can go out in the field and just test with both bipods and form a more solid opinion as to how it manages the recoil. So to get this on the gun, simply flip your little lever up. I'm going to put it on this way so I can have the point of contact as far forward as I can on the rifle. We have that much pick rail we need to cover. You might think it would be in the way of the scope, but it is designed low enough to avoid being in the way of the scope. I want to get as much pick rail as I can on it. To lock it in, probably just flip it down. I probably need to give this a little adjustment just to set the tension to the correct position. There we go. You can swing and rotate. The gun pretty much is self-leveling as well as you can pan and uh, tilt it. Now the only issue I'm having is because I mount my scope so far forward on the gun in order to have enough room to film my scope cap is hitting this. So I'm actually gonna take the scope cap off because also the bipod is getting held up on this. If you had your scope in a normal position, you would not have this issue at all. It's just an issue I am having because I have my scope mounted pretty much at the end of the gun so I can put a camera behind it so I can film. So that's how that would transport around. When you want it to deploy it, you push these little buttons in on the side comes down and you're good to go. Little downward pressure, the gun's immediately centered. Let's test this out. It's on there, gun's already level. Gun's level, gun's level. Let's see this, Let's see. It. Gun's level, level. Level. How awesome is that? All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. By far, I am most excited about the new bipod I got for the gun, and you know, equally excited about the red dot I put on today. All of this stuff combined, I think, is going to give me a really accurate, great shooting, fun gun to shoot. What makes it the most fun is this suppressor I got on the end. It really tones it down. You can shoot it with no hearing protection all day, every day. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was a little bit helpful and informative and in building your ultimate air rifle. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe and leave me a comment about this. I'd like to hear your opinion on what I've put together here. Until next time, guys, I will see you later. How many bipods do you have on your gun? Is it enough? In my hands is my heart And she won't let go till it's gone But she keeps me alive She's the beast in my bones She gets everything